How you feel, okay? Make him a row captain right away. You elected row captains, didn't you? Well, it's in your interest. Uh, a lot of audiences take the easy way. They pick the guy in the end. That's what we did in 1972 and 68. Let's not do it again, man. <laughs> My job, essentially, is thinking up goofy shit. <laughs> Comes right down to that. I mean, you don't have time all week. Just uh, signing checks, going to the laundry, answering the door. Herbie, come here. A lot of interruptions. Hi. Yes, you are in this. You may say anything you like. You don't have a lot of lines. Granted, right? You have to think of them, but it's often hard for me to understand them, because oddly enough, these places are built for the voices to go that way. <laughs> and what I hear is, <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell. I have to turn around and say, Get off there, you asshole! So I think up the goofy shit and I come on the weekend and report it to you. <laughs> For instance, have you ever noticed on the escalator that the handrail moves a little bit faster than the thing you're standing on? <laughs> have you noticed that all frozen peas are the same size? <laughs> there are no really large frozen peas. It's like, have you ever started a path? No one bothers to start one. We don't mind using the ones that are there. Over here on the path, Dane. <laughs> but do you ever take the time to start a path? Go ahead. It's a little hard. You have to hold the grass down yourself at first. <laughs> so, here we go. If you're a discus thrower and you practice alone, you gotta go get it yourself. <laughs> All the shit you can talk about, nobody bothers talking about. Who empties the wishing well? <laughs> Acupuncture. We know you can go if your complaint is pain. Can you go to the acupuncturist if your complaint is that you have thousands of tiny needle holes all over your body? <laughs> what would he do? Anyway, hi and say how are you and welcome to the Big GC Show here. Lots of the big sounds coming up for you. We play the big tunes between now and midnight. Time temperature checks, news on the half hour, bulletins when they happen. <laughs> we'll have it all. Thank you. Let's go. You know how when you're, when you're a teenager, like they talk about grass or any drugs that science has provided us. <laughs> a gesture means anything. Uh, they always forget all those beer and wine experiences that the adolescent goes through. Beer leads to heroin, there's no question about it. Right? <laughs> Definitely. In fact, mother's milk leads to everything. Acid, DMT. Mother's milk leads to cannabinol. Always been looking for that no poke shit. People always talk about one poke shit, two poke shit. Look at my eyes, me and my old lady. Put it out three times always. <laughs> no poke shit. It's good, you just cop and you leave it at home and stay high. Knowing it's in the closet. 
Because there are all kinds of variations, all that mystique, like wines have crept into the pot thing. They were always there when I was like 15, 16 and learning about grass, it was Panamanian green. They used the whole word. Now you've got Panama red, Acapulco gold, naturally. And you run into some nice offshoots. You've got Chicago green, which is really a Mexican green, but it's grown near that gold. And then there's, uh, well, a guy laid something on us once. He said it was Toledo window box. <laughs> We had gotten into grass about, like I say, 53, 52, and uh, most guys drank before they bothered with anything like that. And there were only two things around. There was only grass and smack, none of those slick, exotic things you guys have today. <laughs> Everybody drank first. Saturday night, what do you do? Buy something, puke on your shoes. <laughs> That's why we heard about grass. The word was out. Marijuana. Marijuana. Bush, hemp, boo, smoke, weed, gauge, grass, tea, Mary Jane. That's in all the books. Mary Jane. Marijuana. Nobody ever said it. You ever hear that? Hey, you got any Mary Jane? What does it do, man? Get you high? <laughs> and we found out grass doesn't make you stagger. Your breath don't smell. And you don't puke on your shoes. <laughs> Which is important. Because when you go out drinking, you can get busted for two kinds of breath. Liquor, won't well, forget it. And puke means, hey, forget it, you already got drunk. <laughs> sure. Grass sent you home, and you could even undergo your mother's closest scrutiny, because by this time, you had come home often enough in someone else's clothing <laughs> that she was openly asking to smell your breath. You smell the breath. <gasps> <gasps> One of the problems that marijuana is having in being decriminalized. Yeah, no one can remember where they left the petitions. <laughs> hey. I think I had three. Yeah, I had three. What are you talking about? Oh, the petitions, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They started the classic way. How did you get started on drugs, sir? I forget, man. <laughs> this man has been looking to get high since the dawn of time. First guy probably thought, this can't be it. <laughs> so he laid down next to a bunch of flowers for a week, and that didn't do it. Stood in the corner. They didn't even have corners. He stood in the corner. No, things didn't work until some guys started to find the right bush. They watched the goats and the sheep frolicking. <laughs> and goats eat that shit, stay up all night and play. <laughs> now you tell me what we're eating isn't wrong. The first time the child hears lyrics are nursery rhymes. And they hear them at that much more gathering age, all through zero through five. And that's their first introduction to bizarre behavior. <laughs> You've thought about your nursery rhymes? Quite a gang we had in there. They're all on obvious various drug experiences. Each of them has his or her fave. I got to thinking of this one night when the word Snow White just passed my mind. I thought, Snow White, right. I had a figure, you know. I didn't know whether it was smack or coke, and I thought, well, can't be smack. Too much housework to do with those seven little devils around. <laughs> Some, something to pep you up, something to make you want to wash the garage. <laughs> a little something for the nose. The seven dwarves were each on different little trips. Happy was into grass and grass alone. 
Just uh, a little occasionally some hash, make a holiday for him. Hey, man, man. Hey, thanks, man. Hey, down here, man. Poke. Happy, that's all he did. Sleepy was in the reds. <laughs> Grumpy, too much speed. <laughs> Sneezy was a full-blown coke freak. <laughs> Doc was a connection. Dopey was into everything. <laughs> Any old orifice will do for Dopey. He's always got his arm out and his leg up. And then, the one we always forget, because he was bashful. Bashful didn't use drugs, he was paranoid on his own. <laughs> didn't need any help on that ladder. Other people in those nursery rhymes, old King Cole, figure what they did. Old King Cole was a merry old soul, and a merry old soul was he. He called for his pipe, he called for his bowl. I guess we all know about old King Cole. <laughs> he wanted to get high and listen to the fiddlers. Hansel and Gretel discovered the gingerbread house about 45 minutes after they discovered the mushrooms. <laughs> hey, I see it too. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? It's rather an obvious one. Silver bells and cockle shells and an acre and a half of killer shit. <laughs> Little Jack Horner sat in the corner, eating his Christmas pie. Stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, Holy shit, am I high. <laughs> Mary had a little gram, no. Mary had a... <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Its stash was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, they both enjoyed a blow. <laughs> little Miss Muffet sat on the top and eating her curds and whey. Along came a spider and sat down beside her and they rapped for about an hour and a half. <laughs> Goldilocks was a speed freak looking for a place to crash. It's obvious. Who else would go to a bear's house? <laughs> and you notice she didn't eat much, right? Little porridge right in the sack. I know what's happening. At any rate, what does that mean? At any rate. What about four and a half percent? <laughs> we just throw those phrases away, man. All kinds of words like that. Calm, cool, and collected. Sometimes something hits, you know, and you're calm, you're cool. Collected? <laughs> I've never been collected. <laughs> I've been collected from. What else they got like that? This, that, and the other. Not like this, and that. Well, you gotta get the other, it's a set. <laughs> Words like <laughs> kit and caboodle. <laughs> Have you ever tried to buy a kit and caboodle? <laughs> you can get a kit, but they're all out of caboodles. <laughs> you get you a reconditioned caboodle. I'd give you a, a caboodle kit. You build your own caboodle. Uh, that's a kit and caboodle kit. <laughs> I want a kitten caboodle, my friend. Like odds and ends. If you have 24 odds and ends on the table and 23 of them fall off, what do you got, an odd or an end? <laughs> Words like refinish. What are you doing? Refinishing the table. Don't you have to restart? <laughs> you should. Refrigerator freezer. Too long. It should be called a refrigerator, man. <laughs> there are words that we just completely leave off. Have a happy. 
I haven't the slightest. <laughs> then there are words that disappear. Not just obsolete words, but recent words. We used to listen to rock and roll. Now we listen to rock. What have happened to roll, man? It's the same feeling I get when I'm walking through Sears, wondering what they did with Roebuck. <laughs> then there are words we need, words that don't exist. Chalant. We have none, Chalant. <laughs> so the concept of Chalance exists. What about Chalant? Near fetched. <laughs> Something very obvious. Say, hey, that's near fetched, Bill. <laughs> Why don't we have cheese fun don't? for people that don't like cheese fondue. <laughs> there are words that don't exist, as I say, things for which there are no names. Those two little flesh lines on your upper lip that run down from your nose to your lip. <laughs> two little lines. What the hell are they? I'm sure they're the vertical frontal something, but otherwise we got no slang name. Hey, I cut myself, where? Hey, you know them two lines that run down your face? <laughs> Here are words that no one has ever said before. Please saw my legs off. <laughs> Hand me that piano. Here's one you never hear. Do what you want to the girl, but leave me alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can make up a whole story that no one will ever repeat, no one ever said before. Big bats down to 155. Five. Over, cross, up the thing, no. Nose, baseball, hieroglyphic, hopscotch, pouch. <laughs> Inevitably, two, four, eight, four, eight, four, eight, four, eight. I, I, with a two, 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 three, four, five. Down here, mother, we're all home now. So long, Jill. Beep, beep, hungry, hungry, are you? I couldn't stand it. Not in my house. Up yours, too, Don. He's back in a moment. We'll all try. Fifty, fifty? Okay, but not me. Good. Oh, yeah. Some words are like jumbo shrimp. I, was, I think jumbo shrimp. <laughs> what are we talking about? It's like a uh, guest host. Mike Douglas always has a guest host. Hi, I'm a guest host. I'm a guest host. Well, it's like military intelligence. Those words are mutually exclusive. You can't choose them like that. I mean... It's like semi-boneless ham. I've seen it advertised. Semi-boneless ham. Now, semi-bone, hold on here. Does it have a bone? It has a bone. And it's a bone. Ain't no semi-bone. Bone is like a crumb. You don't think much of a crumb, but think about it. You break a crumb in half, you don't have two half of crumbs. You got two crumbs, man. <laughs> There's something in everything for you, I guarantee you. Something, in fact, that you'll probably have an interest in. How words can fool you? I mean, we really know. We know. You can hardly ever say to any group of people anywhere and be teaching them anything that words have such varied roles, you know, and have such varied meanings. That you just call, all kind of go, words. <laughs> and we all agree that we'll think about those aspects of them. 
Here's a statement of an anti-pornography dude, kind of an anti-smut man. And words, what you select, tell a lot about you. Our thrust is to prick holes in the stiff front erected by the smut dealers. We must keep mounting an offensive to penetrate any crack in his defenses. So we can lay to rest his dominant position. We want him hung and we want fast action. Let's get on him. Let's ram through a stiff bail law so it'll be hard for him to get it up. We've got to come together so we can whip this thing into submission. It'll be hard on us, but we can't lick it by being soft. <laughs> I'm going to get some water. What you call your water? This is your H2O, my friend. I don't mind telling you from the scientific community. Look at that, huh? Shit just drops and drips. Water says, who cares? Drink me, I don't give a shit. Put me on your ass, I don't care. <laughs> water says, leave me alone, I'm in the lake. Get oil away from my water place. Some ice, ice is water. Some water hasn't been water in a long time. It's ice in the North Pole. Long time no water. Ice, what are you, I'm ice, I was water. I'm hoping to be water again. After the ice age, ah! What about ice? You could be two kinds of ice. You could be ice made in the machine in the Holiday Inn. <laughs> or well, you could be a hunk of ice that comes across a mail pouch sign in Minnesota in January 21. Sometimes I just say shit I never heard before, man. I don't know. <laughs> Dig this, the metric system is coming into the USA, into use in the USA soon, and that means you and your old lady will go down and cop a kilo of hamburger. <laughs> Can you imagine cleaning up a key of hamburger? Roll one, smoke one, eat one. Roll one, smoke one, eat one. You could always get a little bologna if you didn't have much bread. <laughs> Nickel bag of giblets. Don't get the meatloaf, man. Somebody stepped on it. Yeah, the meatloaf is covered with veal and pork, man. Grandma ham? Hey, wanna do a couple of lines of ham? Yeah, all right. I get this gristle out of here, man. New York City, a consumer group measured all the hot dogs and what they had in them. <laughs> and there are allowable levels of uh, what's called filth by the... F yes. <laughs> Food and Drug Administration has filth limits. And uh, it's all part of our ever increasingly interesting value system. But the filth uh, thing is very small and they're measured in bug parts, roach droppings, rodent hairs, okay? So they study all of these hot dogs, 16 brands in New York, and they get your 50% water, 99% fat, I mean, you get a lot of large things, and then some stuff that looks like meat that a guy threw in while he was thinking of meat. <laughs> or looking at a picture of some meat. And then you got your filth, what you call your filth. And every one of the 16 brands had some traces of rodent hairs, roach droppings, bug parts. <laughs> Which I think someday this means that eventually we will advertise hot dogs like cigarettes. Low tar, low nicotine. Yes, we have less roach droppings than the other leading brands. <laughs> This is true. I was uh, an Irish Catholic, and I had to quit the Catholics because they were after my soul. <laughs> it was as simple as that, and they had announced it to me. So we want your mortal soul. <laughs> and I had heard about my soul. Most people have heard about a soul before they've heard about Catholic. I'd heard about soul, and I'd been told almost every time they mentioned soul, they were saying, save it. Save your soul. Save your soul. And the Catholics were after mine. 
I said, no good, man. I'm saving my soul. Yeah. Let's shine it up. And use it on the weekends. See, the whole God thing got out of hand. We take something, we humans, huh? When are we going to have a meeting? When are we humans going to have a meeting? We got out of hand again. We took the God thing and ran off the God name into the earth with it. We got this God notion. It's a good notion. It's probably a right notion. I can't talk about the use of a specific word you use for that notion, but generally speaking, we have been rather self-centered about our attitudes with God. In fact, we created him in our own image and likeness. <laughs> every picture I ever see, every statue is a humanoid, exception of the Holy Ghost, of course. <laughs> He's out on weeknights making home calls, but the other guys were humans. I can tell. Yes, very self-centered about the whole thing. In fact, when we put a statue of Jesus on our dashboard, Instead of having him watch for traffic, which he should be doing, we got him watching us drive. <laughs> watch this, Jesus, left turn. <laughs> driving for Jesus, driving for Jesus, making all the lights. God was a cool guy. That's what we forget. That's all we ever wanted to be, most of us. We might have said it different ways, but at the end of your prayers, you say, please, God, let me be a cool guy. <laughs> and God was a, is, you know, cool guy. In fact, so cool that he's not the guy we think. The guy we think of as God, hey, we're humans walking around here, man. How are we going to know about God? The guy will tell you, we are so bold, we will describe God for you. Oh, I'll tell you about God. Jeez, yeah. Hey, first of all, your God is all-powerful. He can do anything he wants. You know, he can throw a, he can throw a boat right over a hedge. <laughs> hey, power you got. Second of all, he knows everything. He knows what you think, he knows what you thought, he knows what you think you thought, what you think you're going to think. He knows if you thought you're going to think of that. He knows what I'm going to say next, and I don't know what the hell it is myself. <laughs> so he knows everything. And thirdly of all, last... He never started, and he's never going to end. Can you dig it? <laughs> now, if you were God, would you let a guy like that go around describing you? <laughs> I'd have some kind of a runoff, I think. Get rid of that fella. Because God, well, first of all, we claim, you know, that he is us, and that's probably the best uh, way to get at it, okay? Most of the major religions have said, love your God, love your neighbor, love yourself. And then without saying it, they meant, because basically it's the same guy. And uh, we don't get that part. We learn it later a bit, if we do at all. And uh, it's true, it's nice. To feel, hey, guys, I'm God, it's cool. It's not an official thing that you buy and you get a stamp or a medal or a thing, but it's something we kind of carry with us. Yeah, right, me and him, sure, you, just in the flowers, of course. Even if you don't tell a truck driver, right out that he's a flower and he's a tree and you're him, you know that he could buy it if someone else told him. Not to put truck drivers down, but I did hear an ad for a semi-truck driver once. And I don't know what that is. Now, maybe it's a guy who finishes half the course. Huh? Could be a little guy. Hey, guy! So if God is you and me, and we're God, he's not perfect, because we're pretty far from it. And how can he be perfect? He's not. It shows in his work. <laughs> yes? All right. Take a look at a mountain range. Every mountain different, different height, different shape. Leaves are all different. He can't get two fingerprints the same, yeah? It's not a billion years to work on that. You can't even get, give one person two thumbs the same. And everything he makes dies. Uh. <laughs> so he needs a lot of help. 
He's only third in command. The, the guy that we think is God, third in command. He's the Western marketing manager. <laughs> That's all. The real God is too busy. Are you kidding? He's throwing gas balls around the firmament. He's got to worry about Earth, man. Wonk. <laughs> what is it, a planet? Oh, I'm a... Earth, right? Uh -huh. I'll bet you it's Sunday. That's the day. My one day off, man. They all crowd in the church. <laughs> day off my ass. So he's a good guy. Remember, religion is in your heart and God is in the bushes. <laughs> That's the main thing. It's like the caterpillar builds the cocoon and the butterfly gets all the reviews. <laughs> Gay lib. Now, interestingly, here is a, an attempt by a put down and kind of like persecuted minority to insist on their place rightfully and their treatment rightfully without it having anything to do with ethnic or religion or anything. It's really an exciting separate part of liberation. Now, I have always wondered, well, no, we've all thought about homosexual, heterosexual. We've always wondered, first of all, some, sometimes we, if we're younger, we react to that in a way that we've been schooled. Then you kind of get your chops and you get things okay and you understand and it's all right to be able to talk about that. And, oh, well, I was, you know, I was, I was, I was a kid and everything else. Come on. You know. <laughs> then, well, here's, here's what I mean. The word homosexual, many people who are not in the position to have to decide this, they wonder about, is it is homosexuality, now, is it normal, is it natural? I ask, is it normal and natural, is it unnatural and abnormal? Now those two words seem to revolve around it. Now let's look at those words for what they are. Natural, hey, means according to nature. Is it according to nature? Well, probably not in the strictest sense, because nature didn't presuppose it. Nature only gave us one set of sexual apparatus. She got some, girls get something for the guys, guys get something for the girls. As it is now, a homosexual is forced to share the apparatus that the opposite sex is using on this person. Certainly, if nature were in command, there'd be two sets of goodies. <laughs> so nature was not ready. We leaped past nature again in our sociological development, way down the road ahead of nature. Is it normal? Normal? Well, what's normal? Let's see, if you're standing in a room, stripped and it's dark and you're hugging a person and loving them and rubbing them up and down and they're rubbing you and you're rubbing them and rubbing them and rubbing them and, rubbing them and suddenly the light goes on and it's the same sex you've been trained to go <laughs> but it felt okay so maybe it was normal without being natural it's not is universal there are some things that work in, in comedy because they're universal, because they're things we all definitely know about, man. Yeah? But we don't always talk about. It's not as way down the list of priorities, man, if you ever hear it. <laughs> Invariably, if you find yourself talking about snot to a friend, there are some other topics you've missed. <laughs> so somebody's got to tell you what you already know that that's fun to think about. First of all, snot is the original rubber cement, right? Thumb and forefinger, heavy friction, try to toss one away. They won't go. You gotta wait. You gotta put it in your other hand and dirty up your fingers. And they go, woo! And they never make a noise. When a little snot lands, just goes, just like that. No one ever knows. Snot landed nearby house today. I threw it out a car. Did you ever pick your nose and have a guy walk around the corner? Hi, Bill, how are you? Shake your hand. My right arm is paralyzed, nigga. Oh. Well, that's okay. Why don't you put that thing back in your nose and come in my office? Put it behind your ear and get in there. Actually, you can put them back in your nose. A lot of people, when they are stuck for a place to put one, they don't think they can put it back. They're viable for four hours after picking. <laughs> after that, it's a struggle, but uh, put it on in there, but don't jar it loose. They come out there. You gotta s sit still the first hour or so. 
But we never think of that stuff, man. It's a release, you know, it's a, yeah. It's not as also camouflage colored. <laughs> Nature and its wisdom, it's camouflage, the color of the land, it's your basic off greens and off browns, huh? <laughs> greens and yellows, depending on what you have. And uh, imagine if snot was fluorescent. Day glow mucus. <laughs> There'd be no place to hide them. See, the camouflage is good color for trees and wood furniture. Where are you gonna put a fluorescent snot, man? You gotta go down to the head shop and wipe it on a poster. <laughs> sure. Well, there are some subjects that are only 50% universal because of the sexual differences. Urinals are 50% universal. Most women have seen a urinal, they will look at one time, whoa, a urinal, hey, one time. <laughs> Quick shot, but uh, we guys have to work them. <laughs> day in, day out, working the urinals. It's not easy. It's true, urinal is like an elevator. There's nothing to do, really, while you're there. <laughs> you can check your fronts of your shoes again if you want. It's probably a different story by now. <laughs> Depending on if you're at a knee-length one or the floor console model. You just piss all over everything and you don't care. <laughs> you know, oh, anyway, it's okay, I got a long one here. But uh, there's nothing to do at the urinal. You stare straight ahead of you, and what do you see? Standard crane, American standard. Patent pending 2861855. You look up high, say, look up here and you're pissing on your shoes again. Oh, yeah, jeez. Oh, so you gotta kill the time. First thing you do is you inscribe your initials on the urinal. Then they run a little bit, then you wet down the entire urinal. Wet down, wet down. Wet down entire urinal. Cover all of the dry spots. Got to get them all. <laughs> Every one. You got to look, see if the light is shining. <laughs> then, then and only then, are you allowed to go after these cigarettes at the bottom of the urinal. <laughs> Targets of opportunity. <laughs> yeah. You had to break up them cigarettes. Field stripping, my friend. <laughs> Camels and Luckies were easy. But a Kent with a Micronite filter. <laughs> Takes three guys and a keg of beer. Come on, guys. Hey, come on. Let's go, man. Another thing that's universal, farts, and we don't get to talk. We don't get to talk much about them, you know, and there's stuff we all know, which is fun to uh, have, you know, I was going to say to bring out, man, that would have been a... F subconscious, subconscious, always working on bad little jokes. I'm not responsible for them. But, uh, yes, farts. Now, everyone knows about a fart. I've often thought, wouldn't it be weird if a guy accidentally through his life had a perfect diet? The guy had never farted. He was 35. And then one day, boom! <laughs> oh, 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 hey. The air is coming out of me! I don't want to be a balloon. Children have a better attitude toward farts. They're not yet uh, indoctrinated about pooping nasty no no, caca. They're just starting to get that and they're pretty free about farts. Did you ever notice your own farts smell okay? <laughs> Say. Say. 
My God, that's fairly decent. <laughs> God love you. The whole group of slang that surrounds farting, or not slang so much as idiom and certain phrases you hear, guy farts, it depends on really the company, you know, you'd rarely hear an audible fart, unless it's like only two people or six really gross people, you know. <laughs> Well, we used to be playing cards, you know, that was when the eight or nine guys around playing blackjack. Dollar, dollar and a half, dollar, no double, two dollars, no double, no double, man, two dollars. Dollar, half a dollar, hey. <laughs> Who let go? <laughs> hey, freely, if you're sick, go to the hospital, man. Fucking <laughs> guy. Man, something died inside. It's not the smell, man, it's the burning of my eyes. <laughs> Remember that one? <laughs> that was always, to me, the best one, boy. That was really terrible. <laughs> That's the way it is. With, you can spread them out apart. You can walk through several rooms <laughs> on a con what we call your controlled emission. <laughs> huh, right. That's right. Short spurts, just like the jets on the, uh, the re retro rockets, you know what I mean? <laughs> Little, little, little. A guy told me a list of kind of farts once. He said there was the fizz, the fizz, no, the fizz, the faz, the fizz faz, the rip shit, the tear ass, the snorter, and the one that goes woo. <laughs> I'm only reporting, you know, kind of like things from, they're not in context. Farting on the elevator is an interesting experience. Uh... If there are only two people on the elevator, everybody knows <laughs> who farted. There are only two attitudes when that happens. One of them is, uh, <laughs> and the other one is, <laughs> <laughs> that guy usually gets off at the mezzanine and walks down, which is nice. It gives you a little time to light up a whole book of matches. <laughs> Burn it off before you get to the lobby. Who wants all those people coming in thinking it's you? <laughs> Stunk up the shaft. <laughs> yes, the entire shaft is now involved. So a high-speed elevator dissipates farts very quickly. I always think about those old cage elevators with the grinder wind-up start. If you could fart on the third floor and leave it there, you know? <laughs> you might sneak away from it if it was paying attention to something else. Farts are... Like, if, sometimes you have the farts, and they're really vicious, and people's loved ones are in danger, you know? Because the qualities, as I say, one of the qualities, one of the properties of a fart, which you can only guess, is it's... Oh, let's call it the density. And then there is the persistence. Does it remain long time? Like mustard gas. A broccoli fart. <laughs> Persistent. Some people's houses don't fall down the last three inches of farts down to the rug. <laughs> farts are being lost. Many farts are lost in foam cushions. <laughs> Hopelessly gone. Years ago, an upholstery of fart would find its way out. Now, forever entombed. Oh, you gotta get a sledgehammer to get one out of there, man. Bong. By then it's a blend anyway. <laughs>